This is a video to look at the use of potassium manganate 7, commonly known as potassium permanganate, as an oxidizing agent in what is called a redox titration. It links with the practical redox 1, determination of the iron content in lawn sand, um, often done at rugby school. The first part of the experiment involves standardizing the potassium manganate 7 solution. Potassium manganate 7 slowly decomposes with time and so the solution has to be standardized, find out what concentration it has, with a solution that keeps its concentration fixed for a longer period of time, a standard solution. In this case it's iron to ammonium sulfate and it has a concentration of 0.100 moles per cubic decimeter. The potassium permanganate is approximately therefore 0.02 moles per cubic decimeter. The permanganate, which is a purple solution, is placed into the burette. The purple color is very intense. We're going to titrate it against 25 cm cubed of the iron 2 solution, which is actually a very pale green colour, but that is a very much less intense colour, as indeed is the product of the reaction of the iron 2. We need to acidify the solution to make sure that the purple manganate 7 iron is reduced to the manganese 2 aqueous iron, which is virtually colourless. Therefore, the manganate 7 acts as its own indicator. When it reacts, it becomes colourless. But if there is a very slight excess, because it's such an intense colour, you will see a permanent pink tinge to the solution. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to pipette 25 cm cubed of the iron to sulfate solution into the conical flask. As you can see, we are using a 25 cm cubed, 25 mil pipette, which um, the glass blower has put an uncertainty of plus or minus 0 0.060 milliliters or centimeters cubed. We will use a safety pipette filler to fill 25 cm cubed into the pipette. This is then transferred to the conical flask. We're going to add 25 cm cubed of the dilute sulfuric acid to ensure the acidity. This only needs to be an approximate value, so we don't need to use a pipette. We're using a measuring cylinder, and this can be approximate. And we add that into the solution. When we, when we have pipetted we will just touch the surface of the liquid with the pipette the glass blower has calibrated for that last bit of liquid and 25 cm cubed of the iron 2 sulfate has been delivered so now we add the 10 cm cubed sorry the 25 cm cubed of the dilute sulfuric acid. The first titration would be a rough titration, usually, but on this occasion I will slow it down as it approaches the end point in order to show exactly what is happening. 
When you come to do this in the experiment, you will do a rough titration and then you will continue uh, with accurate titrations until the result is concordant within 0.1 cm cubed results of each other. The meniscus on the potassium manganate 7 titration is not particularly good, especially if the glassware is um, in any way dirty. And so sometimes it's quite difficult and rather ambitious to perhaps be able to read it uh, and get two results within point one. So as we add the um, manganate seven, what will happen is that the purple solution, the manganate seven ions, will react with the iron two ions. And of course, what will then happen is that the, man the manganate seven ions have become uh, nearly colourless and the iron 2, which is very pale green, uh, have been converted into iron 3, which would be a very, very pale yellow colour. So as we continue, the purple permanganate will, of course, continue to react and disappear. You'll notice that the purple coloration starts to increase, but on swirling, you see that it disappears. So as we approach the, the end point of the titration, more and more of the purple will develop. And as you swirl it, it will disappear. So as you feel that you're approaching the endpoint when you're on to the accurate part of the titration you will be adding it at about this pace dropwise until this happens which is the formation of a permanent pink tinge and the reason why that has happened is because now the manganate 7 iron is in excess all of the iron 2 has been converted into iron 3. Now without knowing the exact uh, or the rough titer for this of course this wasn't changed on one drop but your job in doing the practical would be to find accurate results where it would change from colorless to the first permanent pink tinge on the addition of one drop